This is Jared Lakefield, a novel by Don Fensler, part 20. Dumbfounded. So now it was 18 to 11. During the timeout, Jared Lakefield was in his own world. We coaches spoke our stupid fucking coach's word and emoted our stupid fucking coach's emotions that made no difference. But Jared was not hearing us anyway. He appeared to be in a trance. He was looking at us, but he was not seeing us. We made no difference. We did not even exist. Someday God was going to take him away from us. The game restarted and the Jared Lakefield frenzy continued. Iowa would try to throw the ball in and they would throw it away. They would try to throw it in and would succeed only to lose it at the other end. Iowa had become tentative, the most profound tentativeness that one could experience. In short, they were fucking paralyzed with fear. Every step they took, they were in doubt. Every pass they threw, they were in doubt. Doubt, scary fucking doubt, dominated their mind like the fucking cold and ice and penguins dominated Antarctica. They could not dribble. They could not pass. They could not shoot. To be totally brunt, I don't think they could even fucking pee standing up anymore. They could not move without thinking about every movement and every limb. They would miss free throws. They would miss layups. They would throw the ball to scorekeepers and cheerleaders. They were switching religions every three seconds right before my fucking eyes. They were done for. Meanwhile, Jared was making shot after shot from the three and sometimes just inside the three. We were setting up screen after screen and Jared Lakefield seemed well pleased. The timing was down and we had gotten the timing down perfectly for him. The goal was to give him half a second and one foot of space. We accommodated him well and he was making shot after shot. Some arched high and some seemed to come straight down with no arch at all from above. Some shots were like bullets blasted from AK-47s and others floated and floated about like hummingbirds. The score became 18 to 17. Then we took the lead and the score be became 25 to 20. Then it became 32 to 22 in our favor. Then at half, 43 to 27, with us feeling like fucking kings and queens and jacks and aces of the universe. The Iowa players were saying what it was like to play against Jared Lakefield. Jared's teammates were accommodating him perfectly, screening, passing, getting open for layups when necessary, when there were three or four even four guys covering Jared it would they would be open for layups Jared was on fire even by his standards hitting shots from beyond the three-point line and within he would sometimes go to the corner and hit 27 footers from there the crowd was blessed was breathless Iowa fans had jeered Jared before the game but now they were his biggest fucking fans never had they seen a game taken over by one player before like this Jared had 31 points and it was only fucking halftime. In Jared Lakefield's de defense, it was like he could stop the entire team at will. Like the fucking Wall of China and Rock of Gibraltar and Prudential Insurance thrown into one. He rendered the point guard useless. Iowa was running around like a fucking headless chicken. The second half was more of the same. Jared Lakefield uncharacteristically ruthless and merciless. He was hitting everything and shutting everything down. Iowa got on a brief hot streak, hitting two pointers after two pointer, but that was even but that was even a hemorrhaging experience as Jared was hitting three pointer after three pointer. Poor Iowa. You, you'd, you hit five shots in a row and yet you still fell fucking farther behind because Jared would hit the threes, five threes in a row. Life is just fucking not fair, LOL. The Hawkeye pricks would, should learn to show a little respect pre-game. Fucking bow down to the Lord Jared Lakefield. Many a coach would later comment that you could play a perfect game hitting shot after shot, two after two pointer, but it didn't matter when the other team, this Jared Lakefield, was hitting three after three pointer. It was like the better you did, the fucking things got, the worse things fucking got. As when St. Cloud State was blowing the other team out, Jared would disappear. But if the other team was playing well, if the game was close, Jared would turn into a monster and crush you calmly, deliberately, 
deliberately no exit. Jared was hitting three pointer after three pointer and with five minutes to go the only question was whether we would hit a hundred points or not and whether we should take Jared Lakefield out. We were ahead 86 to 65. The game was not in doubt but, Jer but Jared had 58 points. 58 points. Would it not be wrong to take him out? To scoring that many points? Jared stole the ball and pulled up just outside the three-point line and shot like a knife through butter. He now had 61 points. He then signaled to us, pointing to himself. What did he want? He pointed to Zach Lowell, our sixth man. I see. He wanted to come out. The Iowa crowd was screaming for more of the Jared Lakefield show. They didn't give a fuck about the buck the. Hawkeyes anymore. All they wanted to see was Jerry Lakefield. But Jerry Lakefield wanted to come out. He did not look happy. He looked tired, distracted, like he was thinking of something else. What else could he be thinking about? He had 61 points. I waved Jack, Zach Lowell in, in and he ran on the court and Jerry Lakefield ran to the bench. The crowd was going insane. I could not think. I could not fathom what I was seeing. The 61 points. Uh, I've never seen a, and I've never seen a home crowd cheering for a visitor like this before. He was that he had 61 points, 25 for 29 from the field, and 11 for 11 from the free throw line. The defense, Jared Lakefield's defense, where he was in five places at the same time, shutting down the entire team, a Division One team all by himself. I could not fathom what I was seeing. The sadness and weariness in Jared's eyes in spite of his performance as he sat down at the end of the bench and covered his head with a towel with the crowd still going mad then suddenly going almost dead silent as they looked down on Jared and saw him so tired, so small with the white towel over his head and shoulders and he walked off, and after the game, he walked off the court into the shadows.